In this video, I added one legend to every team's weakest position. Now, I figured out the weakest position by going to the adjust lineup screen and looking at which position had the lowest letter grade. If there was a tie, we put the positions on a wheel to see which one we would be adding a legend to. Except we're not going to count fullback, kicker, or punter because I wanted to make sure the team's got a sizable upgrade. Now, we're going all the way back to Madden 99 because that's where maddenratings.wheelie.com begins at. Now, it can't be a player that's currently on the team. So so for instance, if the Niners' weakest position is tackle, we can't make a duplicate of Trent Williams. No, we gotta find someone else. So I looked up 20-something rosters for all 32 teams from MaddenRatings.Wheelie.com for a total of like 600 plus, just to make sure I got the highest overall that position to upgrade for that team. So I'd greatly appreciate it if we could get to 600 plus likes. That'd be amazing. And finally, last note on the video, we're only able to use legends, and I use legends loosely. You know, by legends I just mean high overall players that played for the franchise anyways we're only able to use guys that were listed at that position but i'm not that strict about it you know if the weakest position on a team is left guard we can use either left or right guard to replace them you know what i'm saying so let's just get right into it we begin with the chicago bears their weakest position was a four-way tie between defensive end d tackle outside linebacker and center all with the c letter grade so he put it on a wheel and ended up landing on outside linebacker and their highest overall Madden history at that position was Khalil Mack, 99 overall back in Madden 20. So we switched them to a 3-4 and now he's starting at left out. And don't worry, Chargers fans, he's still on Los Angeles. We made a duplicate. Before we keep going, man, we have our first super chat in months. Thank you so much, TLH Arts. He says, love the vids, bro. You should do a game where every team is zero overall except one. And that one team is a God Mode 99 overall team. It would be cool to see the insane stats and to see how many years they hold on to the dynasty. That is a banger, okay? It's probably gonna take me months to put together, but I appreciate the idea and the donation. The Bengals' weakest position was a tie between outside linebacker and guard, both with a C. So we put them on the wheel and it landed on guard. So now Joe Burr is gonna have an upgraded offensive line. Eric Steinbeck was a 91 overall back in Madden 07, and now he is back. In in Cincinnati. Buffalo's weakest position was guard with a C letter grade. So we went all the way back to Madden 04 when Reuben Brown was a 97 overall. So Josh Allen's offensive line improves tremendously. The Denver Broncos had a three-way tie. Tight end, center, and safety were all at a C. So we had to go back to the wheel. It ended up landing on tight end. So you already know they had to take a visit to Club Shay Shay and bring back 99 overall Shannon Sharp. Well, technically, he was in the 100 overall club back in Madden 99 and he's tied for the highest overall tight end in the league. Now Cleveland has a really well-rounded roster. Their lowest letter grade was a C plus at four different positions. Quarterback, offensive tackle, D tackle, and outside linebacker. So of course we had to go to the wheel and landed on quarterback and their highest overall was Jeff Garcia back in Madden 05. This man was an 88 overall. Very underrated. So now Cleveland's up to an 88 overall with a quarterback quarterback that has abilities. The Bucks had an easy decision, man. Their lowest letter grade was a D at guard. So they had to go back to Mad 13 to bring back 97 overall, Carl Nix. So now Baker has an elite left side of the offensive line and that offense gets even better. Arizona had four positions with a letter grade C, D tackle, outside linebacker, center, and offensive tackle. They ended up landing on the center position. So they went back a few years to Madden 22. When Rodney Hudson Hudson was a 92 overall. Now he's the new leader on the O-line for Arizona. As for the Los Angeles Chargers, another easy decision, their D-tackle position had a D letter grade. So they went all the way back to Madden 08 when they had a 98 overall Jamal Williams. Huge boost to their front seven. Believe it or not, the Chiefs' weakest position was on offense. At tackle, they had a C letter grade. So now Mahomes' O-line gets even better. They bring back a 97 overall Willie Rofe from Madden 07 and you give the best quarterback in the league arguably the best O-line and Kansas City is now an 87 overall but before you crown them as champions just bear with me we have a lot of teams left let's look at Indy whose weakest position was the outside linebacker they had a D and they're gonna bring back Robert Mathis who went back and forth between 
playing D end and outside linebacker throughout his career. But his highest overall when he was listed at outside linebacker was 93 back in Madden 15. So here he is on Indy. As for the Washington Commanders, their weakest position was easily guard where they had a D letter grade. So they're going all the way back to Madden 07 when they had a 94 overall Randy Thomas. So Jaden Daniels O-line gets a nice boost. We had to go back to the wheel for the Dallas Cowboys. They had three positions with a C letter grade. Outside linebacker, D tackle, and center. We ended up landing on D tackle. They bring back a 97 overall Leroy Glover from Madden 04. And they might have the best defensive line in the league now. Miami had an easy decision to make. Their weakest position was center with a C letter grade. So they're going to bring back one half of the Pouncey brothers. Mike was an 89 overall in Madden 25. And now he's going to be protecting Tua. Another team that's going to be upgrading their offensive line, Philadelphia, had their lowest letter grade at guard with a D. And luckily for them, they had plenty to choose from, but their highest overall was 98 overall Evan Mathis from Madden 25. The rest of the league is lucky that Kelsey retired because it would be GG's. Speaking of G's, guard, outside linebacker, and DN are the three positions that had a C letter grade for the Atlanta Falcons. We spun the wheel and it landed on guard. So they're going to bring back a guy at that position who goes by Keenan Forney, 92 overall from Madden 08. And now ATL has a really solid guard duo. If you guys caught the foreshadowing earlier, you should already know what the Niners position is. It's offensive tackle where they had a C. So now they have arguably the best tackle duo in the league. After bringing back Joe Staley, 96 overall from Madden 25. They're up to a 90 overall. I think that might be the highest we've seen. The Giants had a two-way tie with D end and center, both with a D letter grade. So we had to go to the wheel and look at who we're going to be upgrading. We ended up with the D end position. They had some pretty good ones to choose from, but the best of them was 99 overall. Michael Strahan from Madden 03. Now their front seven is looking pretty scary. As for Jacksonville, easy decision for them. Guard was their weakest with a C. So now Lawrence gets a boost to his offensive line with Vince Menawai. 94 overall from Madden 09. Jacksonville is up to an 86. The Jets' weakest position was on defense. Outside linebacker, they had a D. So they bring back someone who was an absolute stud. Mo Lewis was a 92 overall back in Madden 01. And their defense is up to an 89. Similar situation to the Detroit Lions. Their lowest letter grade was C at outside linebacker. So that front seven is going to get a nice addition. With Ernie Sims from Madden 09, he was a 90. 94 overall and they should be in contention with a very well-rounded roster we had another four-way tie in green bay center tight end mlb and outside linebacker all of them had a c letter grade we ended up landing on mlb and even though clay matthews was listed at mlb a few times in his career the highest overall mlb that the packers had was not him it was nick barnett who was a 94 overall back in madden 09 so now their defense is up to an 85 as for the carolina Panthers. We had another four-way tie. Quarterback, tight end, outside linebacker, and D-tackle, all with a C-letter grade. The wheel decided to bless them by landing on quarterback. Superman is back in Carolina. 94 overall Cam Newton from Madden 17. Looking to duplicate his MVP season. We had another tie in New England. This time, D-tackle, guard, and offensive tackle, all with a C+. Plus. So you can see their roster is already pretty well balanced. They end up landing on offensive tackle. Bruce Armstrong, 94 overall from Madden 2000. On to the Las Vegas Raiders. Their weakest position was outside linebacker at a D. And the first time was so nice, he had to do it twice. Hello, Mac was a 97 overall at outside linebacker in Madden 18. He was a 98 in Madden 19, but he was listed at D end. So he had to use this version. On to the Los Angeles Rams. Their weakest position was easily the MLB b where they had a d letter grade so they went all the way back to madden 09 to bring will witherspoon out of retirement he was a 92 overall and they get a much needed upgrade to their front seven we had another tie this time in baltimore guard offensive tackle and dn were all c's so you had to go to the wheel again it ended up landing on defensive end so that already stacked front seven gets even stronger and you're not a real one if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet hello from Madden 13 gonna join the D-line in Baltimore and now they're up to an 87. Similar 
situation in Nolens. Three-way tie, D tackle, safety, and offensive tackle. All with the C in the wheel. Ended up telling us to upgrade D tackle. For the second time in the video, Leroy Glover will be brought back. He was a 96 overall in Madden 02. And their defense is up to an 88. Seattle's weakest position was easily center where they had a D. And I knew who it was before we even started looking it up. Max Unger, 92 overall from Madden 25. Helping out that Seattle offense. Pittsburgh's weakest position was on the offensive line as well. At tackle, they had a C. So they bring back a guy to help protect the blind side of their quarterback. Marvel Smith was a 92 overall back in Madden 08. And all of a sudden, Pittsburgh's up to an 85 overall. As for the Houston Texans, they had a two-way tie between outside linebacker and center, both with a D letter grade. But the wheel told us to upgrade the outside linebacker position. So we had to bring back a guy that was a former first overall pick. Jadeveon Clowney was a 92 overall back in Madden 20. So the real one is chilling in Houston now. And we gave the Panthers a duplicate. Tennessee, safety, quarterback, guard, and offensive tackle were all a C letter grade. And the wheel decided to bring back a safety. And it's actually not going to be Kevin Byard. They had someone at a higher overall. Michael Griffin, 95 from Madden 10. Nice boost to their defense. He's now their highest overall. And then last but not least, Minnesota. Also had a tie guard and defensive end were both C's so he had to spin the wheel one last time and it landed on guard and luckily for them they had not only a legend but one of the best to ever do it Randall McDaniel 99 overall from Madden 99 protecting JJ McCarthy we'll see how the rook can do with an upgrade to his old line so now every team's weakest position has become one of if not their strongest so there's no excuse whoever wins this Super Bowl earned it but I'm curious who you think it's gonna be as usual let me know your predictions this is a tough one as much as I want to be different and choose teams that normally don't make it there I mean come on I, I think the Ravens are gonna be insane with Nada on that D-line at front seven and my NFC pick is a team that also upgraded their D-line the Cowboys I think those two teams are going to make it but i'd love to be wrong and have two teams surprise me the texans go 16 and 1 with jadevion ravens 15 and 2 chiefs bills jets dolphins and jaguars all end up in the postseason bengals miss out with an upgraded offensive line that's pretty shocking steelers i thought would have a better record than that same with the browns 6 and 11 with jeff garcia broncos and patriots end up with the last two seeds nfc we had the cowboys with the one seed eagles 13 and 4 packers Niners, Lions, Bucks, and Vikings. JJ McCarthy with one of the best guards to ever do it. McDaniel blocking for him. They end up with the last playoff spot. Seahawks finish above 500 and don't make it. That's unfortunate. Commanders are right there. Cam and the Panthers go 7 and 10. The Saints go 7 and 10 with Glover. Giants with an improved D line. Falcons go 5 and 12. I thought they would do way better than that with Forney on that offensive line than the Cardinals and Rams with the last two spots. Only four sacks for Khalil. In Chicago. He did have 24 tags for a loss. An interception, two deflections. Steinbeck on Cincinnati only allowed two sacks. Ruben Brown only allowed one in Buffalo. Shannon Sharp with a nasty season. 78 for 792 and five receiving touchdowns. Jeff Garcia with a nice season. 25 to 6 ratio. 3,600 yards. He also rushed for seven touchdowns and averaged four yards a carry. Like he did all he could. Carl Nix allowed six sacks on the season in Tampa Bay. Hudson allowed five five in Arizona. Jamal Williams, one of three chargers with double digit sacks. He had 22 tackles for a loss. Willie Rofe allowed eight sacks in Kansas City. Robert Mathis, six sacks in Indianapolis, 16 tackles for a loss, two pass deflections. Randy Thomas allowed four sacks in Washington. Leroy Glover, 22 and a half sacks in Dallas, 20 tackles for a loss, two deflections, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Not to mention a safety. Four sacks allowed by Mike Pouncey in Miami. Evan and Matt, this same thing. Four sacks allowed in Philly. Keenan Forney, seven sacks allowed in Atlanta. Joe Staley only allowed three sacks in San Fran. 19 and a half sacks for Michael Strahan. 22 tackles for a loss. Two forced fumbles. Vince Menawai only allowed five sacks in Jacksonville. Mo Lewis, six and a half sacks for the Jets. 15 tackles for a loss. Two deflections. Mo sacks in Detroit was Ernie Sims with 11. He had 17 tackles for a loss. Four deflections, a forced fumble. 
Bowl. As for the Packers, Nick Barnett, three INTs to lead the way. Two and a half sacks, five tackles for loss, 151 tackles, seven deflections, two forced fumbles. He did it all. Cam Newton, 25 touchdowns, seven INTs, 3,400 yards. He also averaged almost five yards a carry and had three rushing touchdowns. Bruce Armstrong allowed 12 sacks in New England. Pretty shocking. Hello, Mack, 15 and a half sacks in Las Vegas. Will Witherspoon leads the Rams in tackles. He has nine tackles for a loss, a sack, 11 deflections. Haloti Nada, second on the Ravens with seven and a half sacks. 11 tackles for a loss, two pass deflections. Second most sacks in New Orleans belong to Leroy Glover, six and a half. He had 19 tackles for a loss, two pass deflections. Max Unger allowed the least amount of sacks in Seattle among the starters. Marvel Smith, however, allowed 13 sacks in Pittsburgh. Another surprising stat line. Clowney had the second most sacks in Houston, five and a half. He had 17 tackles for a loss, a pass deflection, two forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries, along with a safety. Michael Griffin, three pass deflections for the Titans, a tackle for a loss, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and then Randall McDaniel only allowed four sacks in Minnesota and helped his quarterback lead the league in passing yards. McCarthy, Prescott, Mahomes, Burrow, and Allen in the top five. Daniels right outside of it. Go down real quick, just see who's at the bottom, see who struggled. Lamar, well, I wouldn't call that struggling. You know, they just didn't pass that much. He still had a good ratio, but Purdy had the most passing touchdowns. McCarthy was third behind Mahomes. Allen and Prescott rounding out the top five. Least amount belonged to Gardner Minshew. So that offense definitely needed some help. Unfortunately for them, they could only upgrade one position. Now, Mixon had the most rushing yards. Henry had the second most. Etienne, McCaffrey, Jacobs in the top five. There's everyone that had at least 1,000. Most rushing touchdowns, Saquon with 18. Henry and Brees had 17. Then Pacheco with 16. And everyone that had at least 10 right here. As for receiving, Jamar Chase with that improved Cincinnati O-line. Burrow had way more time to throw it. And he leads the league in terms of receiving yards. You're going to scroll all the way down to 1,000. Waddle had 1,000 on the dot. Chase had 120 receptions to lead the way. Jefferson and Jameson Williams in the top three, but he couldn't get the triple crown. Ayuk ends up with the most receiving touchdowns with 17. Kelsey with 15. Cup with 14. On defense, Barnett led the entire league with 151 tackles. Most tackles for a loss, Khalil Mack. So I told you, even though the sack numbers weren't crazy, he still did his thing. Strahan was in the top three. Same with Leroy Glover. Most sacks, Leroy Glover. I mean, unbelievable season. Strahan second. Parsons. I told you that Cowboys D-line is scary, man. You had Crosby in there as well, along with the Khalil Mack from the Raiders. So that's another scary D-line. Most INT, Sauce Gardner. Do we have any of our created players in the top 10-ish? No. Most deflections, though. JC Horn, Devin Lloyd. Seeing if we have any of our guys. Nope. Okay. Brock Purdy wins MVP. Prescott and Mahomes in the top three. McCarthy ends up fifth. Garcia ends up top 10. How did his Browns not make it, man? You hate to see it. Mixon wins OPOY. Watt wins DPOY. Khalil Mack in the top three in the AFC. Leroy Glover wins it in the NFC. Strahan right behind him. Barnett in the top five. OPOY goes to Barkley. Best QB, Purdy. Best running back, Saquon. Ayuk wins best wide receiver. Lindstrom wins best O-lineman. Best D-lineman, Leroy Glover. Strahan right behind him. Best linebacker, Ernie Sims from the Lions. He had himself a nice season. Khalil Mack ends up top five on the Bears. Barnett ends up sixth. Best DB, Byron Murphy. As for the AFC, Mahomes wins best QB. Garcia ends up seventh. Best running back, Mixon. Best wide receiver, Jamar. Linderbaum wins best O-lineman. Ruben Brown right behind him. Steinbeck also in the top 10. Crosby wins best D-lineman. Jamal Williams ends up eighth for the Chargers. Best linebacker, TJ. Khalil from the Raiders right behind him. The other Khalil ends up fourth on the Chargers. Robert Mathis ends up 10th for the Colts. Best DB, Sauce Gardner. So many of these legends had great seasons, but only one of them will be able to hoist the Lombardi. And it will be one of these eight teams remaining. The Ravens take care of Jacksonville. Packers lose to the Vikings. The Chiefs dismantle the Dolphins. Lions beat the MVP and the Niners. Buffalo takes care of the Jets. And the Eagles beat Tampa Bay. And they end up in the final four after destroying the Lions 45-9. The Ravens beat the Chiefs 31-20. Cowboys get shut out by the Minnesota Vikings. So my Super Bowl prediction is not going to happen. Meanwhile, the Bills beat the Texans. So our final four is set. We have Nada and the Ravens taking on Ruben Brown and the Bills. And then Evan Mathis and the Eagles taking on Randall McDaniel and the Vikings.
things. So maybe not the teams with the most exciting upgrades, but I mean, this goes to show that you win games in the trenches, okay? Eagles improved their O-line. They're gonna start off with a nice pass. Saquon out the backfield, getting a huge gain. Vikings with another blitz. It ends up working. Never mind. What a catch by Dallas Goddard. What a pass by Hurts under pressure. And Philadelphia's up seven. But look out for this Vikings offense. Their O-line got a much needed boost. They already have some of the best skill position players in the entire league. McCarthy with all kinds of time to throw. Gonna find Hawkinson on his first pass. This would be unheard of. We've never seen a rookie quarterback win a Super Bowl. We've seen them get there, I think, or get close, but never win it. So McCarthy has a chance to make history, but Bryce Huff is there for the sack. Randall McDaniel at right guard. He's doing his job. That was pressure from the left side. Let's see what happens this time. They're double teaming Jalen Carter. McCarthy gonna go down again. Bryce Huff with back to back sacks. Now I'm gonna give the Vikings another chance on offense because it was a quick three and out. Wanna see if they're able to do anything. The Eagles get another touchdown. Hurts to AJ Brown for a 25 yard tutty. So Minnesota has to tighten up, man. We've seen them not do so hot in an NFC championship game against Philadelphia in the past. They're trying not to replicate that performance. Aaron Jones with a nice start to this drive. And Minnesota avoid punting the ball back to back possessions, third and five. Jones in the backfield. Eagles once again only rush four and McCarthy misses a wide open Jefferson and they're gonna have to punt. I do like that he's at least looking to his best wide receiver but you have to get that completion because this happens 28 to zero at one point Philadelphia running away with this one and they're gonna be headed back to the Super Bowl 34 21 final score hurts with a master class McCarthy actually did pretty well he started off a little shaky but they just could not stop the Eagles man 6.2 yards a carry for Saquon Jefferson ended up getting going he got a touchdown but it was too little too late Evan Mathis has his team moving on Randall McDaniel is headed home you get to see both these teams upgrades taking on each other Baltimore with Haloti on the D-line Buffalo with Reuben Brown in the O-line Allen trying to take off loses three yards very next play Baltimore sends a blitz Allen finds his tight end but he drops it as if the Ravens needed an upgrade to their defense I mean technically they did because that was you know one of the weakest positions but I mean look at that Haloti not a dropping back in coverage I mean what can't he do oh well that's a nice pass by Allen 20 yards on third down to MVS this time Haloti lined up against the right tackle almost gets to Allen but not in time they get another first down fourth and one they're gonna settle for the field goal solid drive by the Bills to start even though none of our upgrades are on the field right now we're still gonna watch one drive from Baltimore see what they're able to do against this Bills defense Mandrews with a nice catch very next play Henry gonna get the carry get a nice block and a first down now we're in the second quarter Tucker's gonna tie this one up at three knew we would have a good one man Buffalo gets the next points they end up getting a touchdown making it 10 to three Baltimore answers back with a field goal Buffalo does as well 13 to six until they make it 20 to six two possession game and neither of my predictions in either conference are gonna make it to the Super Bowl Buffalo wins this one Josh Allen is headed to the big game MVS had himself a nice performance Ruben Brown allowed zero sacks Haloti not had a tackle for loss four tackles but it was not enough so here we go two teams that upgraded their offensive line in the Super Bowl man the missing piece Oh no, Hurts starting off on the wrong foot, throwing an interception to Deion Jones. Ruben Brown at right guard. He's going to help protect Josh, give him enough time to find Dawson. And the Bills off to an early lead. Let's see if Philadelphia can fight back. If it's close in the fourth, we will hop in. But Buffalo off to a really nice start, 21 to 7. Make it 28 to 7. This is crazy, man. Philadelphia struggling early. And now they dug themselves too big of a hole to climb out out of we have a new Super Bowl champion the Bills end up winning it all with Reuben Brown back in town Josh Allen is a Super Bowl champion that's what would happen if I added one legend to every team's weakest position you just need a little help on the O-line man thank you guys for watching please let's hit that like goal if you want to see more videos like this where I have to look up tons of players I appreciate all the support and I'll see you on the next one